In a game with 110 exotic weapons, the title of best exotic in the game isn't one to be taken lightly. While many revere Gallahorn thanks to its iconic Destiny 1 status, today I'm going to be exploring how this exotic has fundamentally changed the landscape of Destiny 2 ever since its 30th anniversary comeback. At some point, I'm going to be making some sort of all-encompassing meta exotic breakdown, but for now, we're going to start with the King. While a lot of you more experienced players have probably already arrived at the same conclusion I have, I'd also like to use this video to present my findings from weeks of testing the most broken exotic perk in the game. Not only are we going to talk about how much Gallahorn has terraformed the Destiny 2 PvE meta, but if you're seeking answers to questions like how much does Pack Hunter actually buff legendary rockets, or which rocket perk is best with Gallahorn, this is the video for you. Starting with basics. Let's get some basic information out of the way before we discuss my findings. Gallahorn is a solar exotic rocket launcher with a few special properties. First, it gains a base mag of 2 with its catalyst, which means that unlike Clown Cartridge and Reconstruction, even simulated reloads like Rain of Fire and Threat of Ascent load 2 rockets into the mag. Second, it spawns 8 wolf pack rounds upon detonating on a target, which spawns an additional projectile if they get any kills. And third, but most importantly, it provides Pack Hunter to allies within 15 meters whenever it is fired. Given Pack Hunter's description in game, it seems like a pretty strong perk on its face. Every legendary rocket near a galley user gains much more effective ad clear thanks to the spawning of wolf packs, and of course everyone seems to be aware that there is some sort of added damage boost that also comes from these projectiles. On top of this, Pack Hunter also provides a sizable handling and reload boost to Gallahorn when you're near allies. Thanks to all of these benefits combined, many teams choose to run a Gallahorn when they are doing rocket damage to a boss or bringing rockets into activities like Grandmaster Nightfalls. However, while these benefits are strong, what makes me so unquestionably certain when I declare Gallahorn to be the best exotic in the game? It's got some stiff competition, Wither Horde, a special grenade launcher with insane ammo efficiency and roll versatility, and Tractor Cannon, the longest total uptime 30% debuff in the game, stored in convenient weapon form. So why is Gallahorn better? To understand this, let's talk about where and how Gallahorn is best used. Starting with ad clear. While most people associate Gallahorn with boss bakes, it's also the most potent ad clear option in the game, provided you don't have a higher priority power weapon equipped than a rocket. Gallahorn is excellent from multiple angles in this regard, even by its lonesome, it's easily the best weapon in the game when it comes to fire and forget, especially because it can handle majors with ease, something that can't be said for competitors like Trinity Ghoul, Wither Horde, and Wayframe Grenade Launchers. Going even further, when Gallahorn powers up allied rockets, it goes from being a strong individual option to a play-style transformation. For the last two years or so, the top end of the Grandmaster Nightfall meta has been completely dominated by pack-boosted rockets and heavy generation, whether it's through exotics like Aeon Soul or Cenotaph Mask or artifact mods like Lucent Finisher. This exotic rocket is so over-the-top insane for activities like GMs that people are able to forego having any game plan besides get heavy, shoot heavy, non-stop. This makes sense though, remember how I mentioned Gallahorn's major advantage being the ability to handle majors? In GMs, an activity centered around killing beefy majors, Gallahorn and legendary rockets instantly delete champions and any threats in their nearby proximity. With high blast radius, rockets were already a pretty good choice for GMs, what with their high single shot damage and splash capabilities. With Gallahorn effectively giving said rocket 300 blast radius, it's no wonder that they are the top pick for any GM fire team completion. You'll notice this trend continues as we move on to the next topic. Rockets are already fantastic as is, but Gallahorn elevates them from S tier to outside the bounds of the sandbox. Let's talk damage. Moving on to what you're probably here for. From what I could gather, most people seem to think that Pack Hunter boosts rocket damage by around 30% based on wipe screen values. Well, that's pretty great. A 30% boost to the game's premier damage option is excellent, and at the cost of just one person having to use a pretty decent exotic rocket for damage, definitely worth the trade-off, no? Well yes, but it gets better. Before we go any further, let me make one thing clear. Even if Gallahorn didn't exist, rockets are still by far the most dominant DPS option in the game. With no Pack Hunter present, a pretty standard Izzy Slug Apex DPS rotation does about 167,000 DPS. For reference, that's more than Acrius, Levies, Two-Tailed, Whisper, and every linear in the game. In fact, the only non-rocket options above this number involve low total damage burst exotics like Horseman and Grand Overture, Cascade Point GLs, or special conditions like Surrounded. So take what we know, rockets are already ahead of the competition by a mile, and Gallahorn gives them an extra 30% on top of that. But wait, there's more. 
If you've played this game for a while, you've probably heard or noticed that pack boosted legendary rockets do way more damage than what seems like just a simple 30% boost to bosses. In fact, if you check the damage screen after you melt the boss with rockets, you'll usually see several millions of damage missing, even though the boss is definitely in the ground. So where does this extra damage come from? When I mentioned testing earlier, one of the things I checked was how much extra true damage was being dealt to the boss by increasing fire team size when using pack hunter rockets. If you're curious by what I mean when I say true damage, check out part 7 of my DPS series where I explain how health bar testing works. But in essence, how much damage is each rocket doing to the health bar when only one person is shooting? How about 2? Or 5? What I found was impressive but not surprising. With one person shooting, Pack Hunter adds an expected 33% to base rocket damage. However, with multiple people shooting, things start to change and change fast. With two people, the number jumps to 64%. With three, 70%, four, 75%, and finally, five, the most common number for raids besides Galley itself, which we'll talk about in a second, caps out at 81%. Let that sink in for a second. According to health bar damage testing, the most accurate measure we have, Pack Hunter provides not 30, not 50, but 81% more damage per rocket when in a full sized fire team. With numbers like these, it's no surprise that rockets absolutely eviscerate every boss in the game. While Gallahorn itself doesn't seem to be subject to the same extra damage chunking that Pack Hunter legendaries are, this is already more than enough to push rockets to more than twice the DPS of almost every other option people consider meta. Well, what about stacking? Surely this glitchy chunking mess doesn't stack properly with buffs, debuffs, surges, balladors, and perks, right? As for the first four, surprisingly, the extra chunk damage scales pretty much perfectly, at around 2.3 times the damage compared to just shooting rockets with nothing. Perks are where it gets a little interesting. Of course, a lot of people are aware that perks like Explosive Light and Lasting Impression don't affect Wolfpack damage. What does this mean when we're considering true damage though? Well, it depends. Let's go in alphabetical order. Bipod is around what's expected at 63% of a normal pack rocket, since a bipod rocket without pack does 60% of a normal rocket. Since a lot of you are asking, yes, we'll test bipod post buff next season, but be aware that given the information we have now, the move from 40% to a 25% damage penalty isn't enough to make it truly noteworthy. On the other hand, chill clip is awful, no matter which way you slice it. One chill clip combined with four regular rockets actually ends up averaging about 96% per rocket compared to five rockets with no perk. With five chill clips, it gets even worse, 92%. I knew chill clip wasn't all it was made out to be early on, but I'd be lying if I said I could predict it being worse than literal perkless rockets. My only theory here is that the constant freezing and unfreezing of a boss target interferes with the ability of pack rockets to chunk a boss down thanks to the overcompensation for massive simultaneous damage. Who knows though, maybe next season's Wolfpack change will actually buff Chill Clip rocket damage in a way, so that it isn't literally worse than having no perk at all. Next up we have the classic damage perks. Based on the previous info on buffs, debuffs, surges, and balladors, it might come as a surprise that damage perks don't actually scale 1 to 1 with Pack Hunter health bar damage. However, this shouldn't come as a huge surprise. Explosive Light and Lasting Impression, for example, perform extremely poorly at 4% and 5% respectively. If we assume that this insane chunking multiplier comes from Wolfpack rounds, then naturally perks that do not affect Wolfpack damage, like the two aforementioned ones, will not stack with chunking either. If we're going on this basis, then another perk that doesn't affect Wolfpack damage is Cluster Bomb, which probably doesn't come as a surprise to anyone at 6.2%. This is a big upset for Rocket perks, since Pack Hunter boosts rocket damage by around 80%, nearly half of a rocket's damage is determined by any modifiers that affect Wolfpack rounds. That leaves 5 remaining potential damage perks, Bait and Switch, Frenzy, Golden Tricorn, Surrounded, and Vorpal Weapon. Let's take a look at the testing results from highest to lowest. Golden Tricorn tops the list at a theoretical 50%, with Enhanced Surrounded just behind at around 45%, Bait and Switch clocking in at 27%, Frenzy at an expected 17%, and Vorpal just below at 7%. Based on these numbers, Vorpal and Frenzy are out of the question, given that Bait and Switch has no special requirement besides shooting all three weapons, something you're bound to be doing anyway. Even if Bait falls short of the full expected 35%, it's still excellent for its minimal activation requirements. On the other hand, Surrounded and Tricorn are insane, scaling perfectly with their base rocket multipliers, although Tricorn is potentially subject to retesting. If you can activate these perks, they are well worth your time, rare as the occasion might be. While Surrounded is easily obtainable on Apex, Golden Tricorn is only available on Red Herring and Blowout at the moment. 
While these rockets have optimal archetypes, neither have a strong perk like reconstruction, although Ambitious Assassin isn't a bad option given that you need a rocket kill to activate Tricorn anyways. Based on our work however, Bait and Switch is going to be the play in 99.9% .9 of damage scenarios. So just how good are these rockets on top of the existing 80% boost from Pack Hunter? After all, weapons don't exist in a vacuum. Well, looking at the damage rotation ranking, the answer is pretty clear. Even with a weaker damage perk like Bait and Switch, rockets absolutely demolish everything else on the damage ranking in both total damage and DPS. When you add Surrounded or Tricorn into the mix, you end up with DPS values that are so far above other weapon types that it's hard to imagine the other options even being in the same ammo class. By now, I think it's become pretty clear why Galahorn is such a dominant force in Destiny. Never before have we had an exotic where just by firing the weapon, top tier legendary options nearby are powered up by a whopping 80%. And not only this, but it's not like other gameplay defining exotics like Divinity, where you need to cripple your damage to make your team's damage more consistent. Many of you probably knew that Pack Hunter is overpowered going into this video, but if there's one point I'd like to get across, it's the idea of truly understanding just how many leagues rockets are above everything else thanks to it. Actually, let me just show you. I did a recent theoretical exercise to simulate what is close to the perfect damage strategy. Lumina, pre-popped Nighthawk swap to RDMs, pre-placed Tether with a swap, pre-cast Balladors, pre-shot Galley, and cold comforts with max Envious stacks, Restoration Ritual active, and pre proc Bait and Switch. With this setup, it is possible to kill every single raid boss in the game in under 10 seconds, with the vast majority of them falling over in 5 or less. That is an output of approximately 27.6 million Templar scale damage in just under 13 seconds, or 2.12 million DPS. For reference, Warpriest has 16.1 million Templar scaled health. Y yeah, linears like Cataclysmic, they would take nearly 50 seconds to do the same damage. With this setup, the DPS you would do would literally kill any raid boss in the game four times over before other meta options could do it once. I it's just not fair. On the other hand, let's forget the land of optimization for a second. In fact, you don't need to do any sort of swapping or stacking with any kind of special rocket roll to outdamage other meta options. In fact, to prove this, I tested the Cupbearer SA2, a blue rarity rocket launcher that anyone fresh out the Cosmodrome can get their hands on. And I compared it to the other quote unquote meta options that are considerably more difficult for a new player to obtain. We're talking stuff like Cataclysmic, Acrius, Two Tailed, Briars, Levy, Thunderlord, the usual fanfare. And believe it or not, with only manual reloads in a Luna Faction well, no Reign of Fire, no Radiant Dance Machines, hell, not even a Marksman's Dodge in sight, the Cupbear SA2 out DPSs all of them, with only the assistance of Pack Hunter. We are at a point in Destiny where a rare rocket launcher with no mods, no impact casing, no reload perk, no top tier damage perk, no nothing, can out damage every single exotic heavy in the game. There is no, oh but divinity and linears are easier for newer players, or oh it's easier to get Taipan than Apex, or oh rockets are sweaty weapons, you need to do a rotation and it's not worth it. Pack Hunter is so fundamentally broken that in most raid and dungeon damage scenarios, a new player will literally do more DPS with a manually reloaded blue rocket until they graduate to, you guessed it, another rocket. Now, of course, this video isn't to name and shame options that people use out of preference. Of course, rockets can get boring, just like how a lot of people found linear stale towards the end of year 5. This video's purpose is to tangibly explain why, wipe screen damage aside, Pack Hunter is probably the most broken perk in Destiny, and by extension, why Galahorn is the best exotic in the game. I hope you found this testing and analysis interesting, and as usual, all the details of my testing are in my boss damage spreadsheet linked in the description below. Thanks for watching.